Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, I want to show you one of the best things I did with my MSI. Um, and this is one of the reasons that I uh, created a video about fourth. Uh, so we're going to uh, go into fourth and show you some software that I wrote a long time ago. Uh, open, I think it's stock. Uh, all right. So, um, anybody who has an MSI uh, has watched the movie War Games, and anybody who's seen the movie War Games knows that the computer talks. It has a, uh, a speech uh, output board. Uh, the kid types in, but the computer talks back to him. So I wanted one of those. And so uh, I found a um, SSI 263 speech synthesizer chip. Now, these aren't canned speech, like you record it and it plays it back. These are actually phoneme generators. So it has uh, format frequencies and filters and... Uh, you need to send commands to output phonemes uh, and you string those phonemes together and it talks. Um, and so um, I wired up a board. Um, I used the um, prototype boards I've been showing you and I put a, a, a SSI-263 chip on it and wrote some software to make it talk. Now I had that board on a shelf in my garage for 20 years and it just sat there and i must have thrown it away one day just got sick and tired of looking at it but uh i really wish i hadn't <laughs> especially now uh so uh, but at least we have um the software and we can take a look at that so um this is very complicated software so let's just skip this page. This page basically is a load page. It loads everything. Um, well, let's kind of go through it. So uh, line two is just type out a message. Um, then there's some setup things like lines four, five, six, just some setup things. And then it's going to start loading program. And loading program means that you're going to load screen. So you could say one load, two load, three load, or you can use the through command, which is basically a do loop of loads. So you can say two a through. It's going to load screens um, two all the way up to ten, right? And it's going to load those all in. And those are the phoneme definitions. And then it's going to do some other things. And then it's going to load in on on line ten. It's going to load into a bunch of words. Uh, and then it finally gets to line twelve and it greets me it says hello mark how are you today so uh, let's take a look at uh, second page now i told you that fourth is both interpretive and compiler and in addition to that it's what's called extensible so you can add commands to it in fact once you have fourth written and working, you can rewrite forth in itself. So forth can actually generate itself in its own language. And you can uh, cross compile, you can create a forth for a different processor and compile that anyway. So there's a bunch of ways to create um, new commands that are actually compiler commands. And that's what this page is doing. This page is going to create some compiler commands. It's almost like using define in assembler, but uh, much different. Um, so line three, well, let's say line two, E0, we're going to be in hex. E0 is the port location for my card that I made. So uh, the base address is E0. And then there's E1, E2, E3, and E4. There's multiple ports on the 263 chip. So the first port is going to be E0. So I'm going to define some compiler commands. I'm going to define P0, port 0. 
And what it's going to do when you type port zero, it's going to uh, take T port, which is E zero, and it's actually going to um, do an eight bit write to that port address. Um, so whatever's on the stack at that time is the operator into that PC store command. So um, if you said uh, 63P0, it would take 63 and it would shove it out to E0. Um, P1 does the same thing, but it's going to shove it out to E1, E2, E3, E4. Okay, so those are all the compiler commands. So let's take a look at screen three. Screen three is a wait, which is uh, the speech processor takes time to talk. And there's a flag that says I'm ready for a new command. And so the wait command just loops until it sees the flag set. Um, setup is the initial codes that need to be sent in order to generate speech before you start throwing phonemes at it. And then you can do very basic programming like this. So hello, if I typed hello, it would execute this. And this would say hello. It would send 0 to port 0, 68 to port 1, A8 to port 2, blah, 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 blah. And it would say hello. Um, OK, 5 is continuation of hello. OK, now we're getting interesting. So we're going to create another compiler command. This one is DP. And this one is you give it a phoneme code, a hex code for a phoneme. And then you say DP, and then you give the phoneme name. So it's going to assign whatever hex value you give to a particular phoneme name, OK? And ignore the words here, because it's very complicated programming in fourth. But let's see, let's see how it's used. So here are the phonemes. It, I think there are 59 phonemes in, in a typical American speech. And um, so zero is a PA, um, which I think is just a pause, actually. But um, let's look at like line four. Zero A D P E H is a eh command. And there's e eh and e eh and a eh and u uh and u uh and u. Uh. These are all phonemes. So these are all of the hex values associated with the phonemes. Now, instead of typing in hex code, you can actually type in the phonemes. So all separated with spaces. So you, if you knew how to how to spell in phonemes, you could create words and have them generate. Okay. So we're getting better. Now, if you string them together, you can make them do things. So uh, colon daisy creates a word called daisy, and it executes this code. And this sings the song daisy. Um, and you can see it's all spelt phonetically, daisy, daisy, give me your answer do, right? And so you can look at this, and it's also changing the pitch. So the P1 registers the pitch value. So it's actually the pitch is going up and down, and it's actually singing daisy in pitch. Um, here's the rest of Daisy. Now that you have, uh, let's ignore this stuff. This is too complicated. Now that you have phonemes, you can create words. So you can create words like hello. Hello is HF, huh, and then an E, huh, huh, and then an L and an O, O, right? So hello. Hello. Uh, my wife's name was Susan, so I have her in there. Susan, you, uh, Msi likes uh, Big Mac. Uh, all just stupid words that I was just playing with. Uh, Dave, what are you doing, Dave? I wouldn't do that if I were you, Dave. So these are all all words that you that I've defined. Uh, would you like to play a game of chess? So all of those words are defining here. So I could type, do you like to play chess or something? And it would say it. Um, uh, thermonuclear, there's a, there's a good one. How do you spell that? Thermonuclear. Uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, so I found the software and I was very, very disappointed that I don't have the hardware any longer. So. I figured, well, let's redo the hardware. Let's build a new board. 
So I figured, ah, piece of cake. Go to eBay, buy 263, or way to go. They got to be cheap these days, right? Turns out that the two C Two, six, the SSI 263 chip is very well um, liked, and it's very, very difficult to get a hold of one. And if you do get a hold of one, it's quite expensive. I saw some people selling them for like 60 bucks each um, if, if they were in stock. I don't know sure if you can get them anymore. So anyway, uh, while I've been doing these videos, I've been watching on eBay and watching and watching and watching, and I think I found one. So. There's something in the mail, and I'll open it up when I get it here on camera. And I believe it's what we need in order to generate and build uh, a new speech card. And I hope that we can get that running and get it talking again. That'd be great.